Cognos dashboards enable users to quickly and easily consume Maximo data. So let me show you how easy it is to create those dashboards. So to recap what we've done, we've brought in some Maximo data, work order data specifically. We prepared it, added some calculations, etc. We explored the data and now we're presenting it. Previously, we had created a report and we're going to use that report from our dashboard. But now let's again, let's focus on how easy and powerful it is to create Cognos dashboards. So when I click on that Cognos dashboard functionality, Cognos presents to me a number of palettes or templates to choose from. And I absolutely love this, right? Because I'm not limited to the left and the right portlet that I have in Maximo Start Center. There's lots of different varieties available. And I could also do an infographic if I wanted more of that horizontal view. Well, let's start someplace simple and I'm going to select this one here. I always like this uh, format and I'm just going to say OK. So as soon as I do that, I now see my dashboard palette where I start building, which is very similar to what I've seen as we've explored data and also as we've created our reports. Navigation over here on the far left, you know, my pins, my visualizations, etc. Menu on the top right and on the top left. A couple of things. If I don't know where to start, follow the blue button, select my data source. I'm going to see use the same one that I've been using, my CA Maximo demo module, and I select add. And again, I see all those fields that I'm very familiar with, my calculations up here at the top. Now that I have my data source, loaded. Let me highlight a few of those other um, items that I noted from the navigation, my pins. Remember when we were exploring our data, we pinned some things that we thought might be important to us. So I have those available that I can simply drag and drop into my dashboard. Here's all the visualizations. If as I'm adding them, I want to add something else, I have that ability. There's some widgets if you want to do widgets and some advanced or, you know, shapes if you wanted to add, a, I don't know, this looks like a building or a check mark or something like that. But again, we're going to keep things simple here and let's build on what we've created. Oftentimes when I am analyzing a data set, I want to know what the content is and this is always important to me. So I'm going to take this one here and I'm just going to follow along in my palette, drop it where he tells me. And now this looks like my total actual costs. <clears throat> now, as I'm building my dashboard, I have to remember who's consuming this data. I know what the total actual costs are because I built this data set and I know this data set, but my consumer might not. So I need to be very specific. So let me change this to my total work order actual costs so they know exactly what it is. So I have over two and a half million dollars, $2.6 million in this data set. Really nice. Well, what else do I want to do? Well, maybe I want to do the same thing over here. So I'm going to drag that same exact field, um, excuse me, that same exact visualization, but I want to change the field. Instead of looking at my actual costs, let's come back over here, use your navigation menu, and let's bring in our actual labor hours. Beautiful. I love that. I'm going to collapse my field section. Now again, the person that's looking this, they don't want to see act labor hours. They might not know what that is. So let's make this more specific. This is my total work order actual hours. Perfect. So this, again, I'm building up this very first page of my dashboard. And I should note that that's my tab one. And I can rename this. Uh, let's I this to my overview. Perfect overview, if I could spell. Nice. Now what else do we want to add? Well, let's look at our visualizations. Is there anything else that I had pinned that maybe I want to bring in? So this was my, um, let's see. Oh, here's my heat map. Remember we were working with heat map. We love, love heat maps. So what is this telling me? These are my work order numbers by work type and priority. You know, that was really interesting, but remember that we were looking at something else that we think might be more interesting than work priority. I'm going to come back here and bring in instead of work priority, let's bring in the actual finish month. Nice. Now let me expand that so we see what we're looking at. So these are the number of work orders that we have by actual finish month and by work type. 
So as we were looking at this previously, we noticed that our PM work orders are all being completed in month nine and 10. That might be concerning. Why would that be concerning? Because maybe I'm, you know, pushing off my work orders to the PM work orders to the end of the year, whereas I probably would want a more straight lined approach to them, not that big uptick in September and October. But one thing that we haven't highlighted too much is we've noticed that that's my actual finished month, but am I really only looking at recent years? Am I looking at 2022, 2023? What year am I looking at? So I wanna make sure that my data is filtered correctly. So I'm gonna look up here on my top menu and I'm gonna select my filters. Now it says, what filter do I wanna add? I wanna add my actual finish year. Let's drag and drop that in place. And notice right away, I've got some bad data or outdated data from 1999. If I only wanna look at say, let's look at maybe the last two, oh, let's bring in 2021. Let's bring in these last three years. And now I'm gonna refresh. So you can see my data did change a little bit. My actual labor hours, I believe they were 144, they went to 143, my cost changed slightly, but I've just really bid that validation. And the other thing that I did is I, I, I selected specifically that filter to apply to all tabs. I wanna make sure no matter what visualization that I'm adding, that I'm filtering my data, that only looking at actual finished dates of 21, 22, and 23, perfect. Let's, before we go any further, let's save this. This is our, um, I always make a mistake sometimes and don't save my data. And then I'm like, oops. So that's my dashboard for my demo. Perfect, let's save that, excellent. Now, the other thing I should highlight is I'm looking at this. What does it look like full screen? I have the ability to do that. I enter my full screen mode. Let's click off my data source. And now I can see, again, my work order actual cost, 2.6 million, actual labor hours, 143, and then some concerning information down here that I don't see a level loading in my PM work orders. Really interesting information. To escape from full screen, I just simply hit the escape button. And now let's come here and add another tab. This time I'm gonna select one single um, visualization and let me open up my pins here. And there was one that we were looking at before, Tuck Joel Abel Cost. I think this is the one that I wanna look at. Let me drag him in place and see if it is. Come on. Oh yeah, this is it, perfect. So this is my actual labor cost by failure code. And you're gonna see why it's so important that you name the pin so you know which one is what. Uh, let me open him up just a little bit more, perfect. So let's take a minute and explore this my total work order actual cost by failure code. Wow, what's going on here with pumps, right? This is where I'm spending all my maintenance costs, a lot with buildings, a lot with tumble, and there's a couple things. So it looks like either I have all pumps in my organization or I'm reporting everything as failure code pumps. But again, let's make this a little bit more intuitive. And you know, if you just wanna make this a little bit prettier, make the uh, case size all the same, perfect. So now that's really interesting, but let's imagine someone is looking at this and as they're looking at it, they want to explore the data in more depth. So this is oftentimes where that drill through comes through, right? That drill through type of content. So what I wanna do in this case is I want to click on that. I keep clicking back and forth because I keep, want, <laughs> keep wanting it to drill through, but I got to set it up first. So I come up here in the menu. If I'm not familiar, just kind of mouse over each one of the icons till you find the drill through. It kind of looks like a, a bullseye. And I want to add my new drill through definition. So what are we drilling through? We're drilling through to that report that we previously created, and it's our failure analysis report. So I'm going to say, okay, so now we have to read the dialogue closely because it's asking us to confirm everything. This is what I want to drill through to, but it says, what do I want to drill through from my failure code field, right? Cognos doesn't know my data, I have to teach him. And then on the bottom, it says, okay, what do I want to apply this to? This visualization, visualizations in the same connection or any visualization on the dashboard. I'm gonna make things pretty simple. Um, 
say and select this last one any visualization let's try that and see what happens and you know if it never works if you're not happy beautiful thing just use that back button if i didn't like what i did okay now if i click on this again do i have a drill through no it's gone i've just erased it so i'm going to do that again just because i think it's really important let's grab that failure analysis report again tell um, cognos doesn't know your data you have to teach them and now i apply so let me quick save this and then i'm going to rename my tab come on and we're going to call this failure code analysis it doesn't like that i capitalize the c so let me go back and clean whoops clean that up nice we'll go ahead and save this i'm going to click out of my pins and now let's full screen start with our overview this is what we're showing someone can you imagine this, like if we saw this data instead of trying to analyze a list tab in Maximo, see how powerful this is. I can know immediately from all those records that they have 2.6 million in actual cost. Here's my labor hours. I have this beautiful heat map. I look at my failure code analysis. Wow, what's going on? If I wanted to click on my pumps, I highlight that. And note that I have to actually right click on that, right click on it, go to my drill through, it opens up my report and now I see all the details. Really, really fabulous. I can then navigate back to my dashboard and save that, right? I've really expanded the types and breadth of functionality that I can do. I should also note that while I did that drill through to a very simple report, there's lots of other information that you can do. You can show your data and then this is also gonna give you that data that you have in a really, really nice context right there within the window. So lots of powerful functionality, lots of amazing visualizations that you can quickly create with IBM Maximo data and Cognos Analytics.